All right, so we're officially moving down the line into the next session. You guys see in your agenda, right? So developing your max RI mindset, creating leverage points today that will pay you for a lifetime, okay? And I've just, I, I, I had an experience. This is the first time I'm... Use the green one, the big the green. green one, the big yep. green one, okay. This is a fancy clicker, right? Okay, so I had an experience, right? Well, before I do that, right, let's just go through. A lot, a lot of people, max ROI, right, what, what, what is that to us, right? And, and what I had been doing in, in my marketing company was doing this for other people, creating systems where I would put in the work, right? And I had this a little bit backwards, right? You put in work one time and you, you get paid over and over again, right? Well, I was doing that for them. So they loved me because it was marketing systems and I was doing it for them. But I hadn't put a lot of stuff in place. You know, the cobbler whose kids have no shoes, right? You're, you're, you're doing a lot for your clients, but you weren't putting stuff in place for yourself. And uh, that's why I was so excited to find notes because the fix and flip business, how many fix and flippers just out of curiosity do we have in this room? So there's probably 30, 30 or so. Um, but you're as good as your next deal, right? You're as good as your next deal. Real estate brokers and agents, you're as good as your next deal, right? And it's something that if you don't take time to put stuff in place, and I, for me on the marketing consulting side and the flip side, it was like I was on a hamster wheel because a, a consulting retainer, what do you do? You provide the service and you got to do it again next month, right? A flip, you got to do it again next month, right? And a lot of you might be able to relate to that hamster wheel, right? And for me, it was like, I want to spend more time with my family, my growing family, right? And this is a, this is a true story. Uh, two years ago, um, you know, you figure, who thinks Disney is, are good marketers? Anyone think that Disney is good marketers, right? You know, it's like, we should have 100% uptake on that. In fact, they're so good, right? So good that my family, we live an hour away. And that's kind of, you know, to look, put a bunch of kids in, in a car and go. You know, my wife and kids with passes went 13 times in 2013. Is that excessive? That's excessive to dad, right? It's kind of like, that's a lot. Guess how many times dad went? One time. You know, and I'm like, I'm getting all emotional right now. But the point is, if you're on the hamster wheel and you're forced to do that, are you able to do that? And so this is, this is near and dear to us, guys, that you got to know your priorities. And that's what I want to talk about are these leverage points because we get stuck doing things that we know we shouldn't be and we should be getting help, right? And you need to do that. So I want to focus on these leverage points, but the key word is leverage, right? The key word is leverage. So I'm just going to go through some leverage points, right, that I think are key that I reflected. And one thing that really inspired me for this particular presentation, how many of you know who Jimmy Napier is? September 2014 in Las Vegas. This is last year. Aaron would have been there with me, but um, cute little boy Liam was, was being born that weekend. So I, I went up there solo, and it was, it was a, one of those life-changing things for me, right? You know, I went there and I listened. You know, um, you've, if you don't have that book, I suggest you read it if you want to be in the paper business, real estate paper business, right? Invest in debt. But he said something that stuck with me, and I'd, I'd heard of him, this book was actually given to me by an anesthesiologist as I was starting to look at notes, right? And he, this guy had a big old portfolio. So this guy was a really successful anesthesiologist, big old portfolio of notes and apartment buildings, right? And had been a really savvy investor. But he gave me this book as a gift and I read the book. And at the time there was, you know, I couldn't get out to a seminar because he had, uh, Jimmy had health, health issues. And so this last year, Finally got his health better and was able to come do an event. And that line stuck with me. Only invest your time in those things that will pay you for a lifetime. And so really, you know, I'm dedicating this little presentation because Travis pondered a lot on that that weekend. And a lot of this has come out of this where I made some shifts in my life. And I want to just pass these on to you guys. Some of the things I was doing already but was doing them for other people. But now it's, there's more focus and more in specific intent that's a writer down or two, do everything with specific intent, right? Because if you're not doing it to your intent, someone else's intent is being applied on, on your day, right? So here it is. So let's go through these. Leverage point number one. And I did do some pondering and put these in a priority order, right? And so, and I thought a lot about them, but this one right here, if you do not have a set of core values that drive your decision making, I would challenge you to take the time to do that. You know, some of you might be in this audience right now saying, Travis, get to the good stuff, right? Get to the how, 
right? Give me some, give me some, give me some tactics that I can go out and grow my note business. We're going to get there, right? But this is where we start, right? So we've got, we've got, we, we, we had three and we most recently added the third one for Travis, right? Because Travis can be more on time, you know? And, uh, but that's one that's going to drive us. The first three, absolute integrity first. And there's a reason there's three words instead of just, just the integrity first. Would that be a good, would that be a good value right there, a core value, just integrity first? The word absolute, there's no gray area, right? There's no gray area. It's very important. Service before self, we've talked about that. Precise punctuality, right? If you can't, if you can't do things and deliver things like you said you're going to do, will people trust you in other aspects? Right off the bat, you're, you're in the negative, right? And the last one, be outstanding in all we do. That's why we shoot for an 11, right? So these are ours. I would invest some time to do it. And a good friend of ours in a mastermind, right, that we're in, he runs 13 companies? Yeah. 13 entities, has kind of a, a, a holding company that owns them all where all the employees are. And they just, in the last year, he actually had me help do his and come up with his. And we had just started down the path. And so I had some of ours already, but I hadn't put them on cards where they were everywhere in the office. The kids knew about them. Everyone knew about them and could repeat them and talk about them. And you attract people into your life based on that set of core values. You repel people that aren't of absolute integrity. They move away. People that think about themselves first, don't, they're not attracted to work with you. It just is a, it's a natural thing, and we've watched it happen. Right, right before our eyes of people that we were thinking about doing business with and as we started to put a line in the sand, we've had people that have let, opted out of working with us. Right, we didn't have to fire them because we talked about these and it was just incongruent with, they just, there were some things and it was just, it was a blessing. So now we hire and fire to that. Right, so it's, it's become something that's, I see that it's paying us and will pay us for a lifetime. Right, number two, a lot of you guys know I'm on a soapbox about this subject, right, that have hung around at our workshops, and I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. John, is John in here by chance? I don't see John. John, how many of you guys have had the Uber experience with cars, like getting a ride somewhere? How many of you guys have had the Uber experience? I've yet to do it, and everyone keeps talking about it, and they're just blown away, right, at how amazing it is. You, you call, and three minutes later, they're like ready to go, you know, it's unbelievable. But I want you just to imagine for a minute, John took an Uber, had the Uber experience, had his first one, and he had to be downtown for an event downtown. Parking was 35 bucks a day at this particular hotel. So he's like, I'm not doing that. And he had the Uber experience. I want you to imagine if John would have gotten in that car and sat there to that Uber guy. I want you to imagine how crazy this sounds, right? If he would have, the Uber guy would have said, hey, where are you going? Right, and I know with Uber, you already have the direction and, you know, the whole thing. They already know where they're taking it. It's so, like, amazingly efficient, right? But imagine you got in there and he asked, where are we going? And you just said, I have no idea. Where do, you want, where do you want to go? You know, do we do that? Like, you guys have heard me talk about this, and I'm going to ask a question in just a minute. But I want you to think just for a minute how crazy that is. How crazy is that, that you would do that? We don't do that, right? We just don't do that in life. But guess, guess what? I'm going to ask a question, and I'm not even going to ask for a raise of hands right now, right? Because a lot of people have heard me ask this. How many of you guys have a written passive income investing plan? Oh, and I got some hand raises. I love it. Didn't even ask for the hand raise, and that's actually really, really good. From so, this guy right here in the middle who never and raises And that number, hand. that number right there? I've been here before. <laughs> that's right. He's been here before. He knew he was going to get it. But you guys have all heard the Harvard study, right? 97%, 3%, 3% have written goals. And they outperform the entire other 97% because of written goals, right? So I want you to really think about that. One thing we, we wrote a year ago, we wrote plans. And some of you got an email from me that had a number in the subject line. And we're about 4,000 shy of our 12-month goal. And we realized that some of this workout stuff takes a little while to get going. And then the goal I had in the email to you guys, I'll talk about this tomorrow, We've almost grown 50% just in the last two weeks since I sent the email because the popcorn starts popping, right, when you're working with some of these non-performing assets. We'll talk about that tomorrow. So really quick, I want you to decide what's your passive income plan, right? And I, don't, I forgot to bring my book up here. How many of you have the book, Think and Grow Rich, right? Look at, the, look at around. How many people have it? I want you to dust it off, 
<laughs> right? I want you to dust it off and I want you to open to page 36. If you we don't did, have it, go get it. We did this in our last workshop. And I was, my goal in that workshop, we didn't quite hit 100%. But in our workshop, I had people, we went through the six steps on page 36, turn your desires, how to turn your desires into gold. Right? And it's a plan. If you have a plan. You walk out of that, it's a one-page plan, you're done. Now, if you want to enhance it and make it this big old thing, people say, uh, write a business plan? That's going to take, like, I got to do, like, a week off-site with my team and have some team-building exercises and hold hands and do all this stuff, and I don't have time to do that, right? So they, they don't do it. But it's just a simple one-page written plan. I challenge people. We did it, and we had them email it to me because I can't help you if, if I don't know what you're trying to accomplish, Right? And so we had an 80% uptake, I think it was, right, yep, of people that attend the workshop out of 30 people. So normally the, it's a lot smaller. So what's your passive income plan? Just a few quick things on that. It's written down, right? I, I suggest Google Docs, right, where it can be dynamic and you can share it with people and, and go through it. It should be simple. I like one page, right? We've already got this. We talked about that. Deadlines are a big deal. No deadlines. It's kind of a dream, right? whereas you're working towards it. So just, I hope you guys will take me seriously. I am excited because that was a lot more people than at our last event and at our last workshops. I think we even might have had 15%, yeah. right, that actually have a written plan. So I am, as you'll, as you'll know by hanging around I me, mean, that's actually a really good time. In your event manuals, you should have had a hot seat application, right? And we're going to do some hot seat panels where a few people will come up in front of the group and we help them through kind of talk through things. There's also at the very bottom of that hot seat application, were they stuffed in your manuals? Did you guys have those in your bags? You should have had those in yeah. your bags. The very bottom, right, I'm literally, this, my assistant Charlotte, you, a lot of you met her, she schedules me, right, and I have a block that I do these on a, almost an every other day basis. And I go through these on the phone. If we don't get it through them here, there's a little box that says, hey, I, I'm interested in a hot seat, you know, with you, but I want to do it not in front of the crowd. I want a like, private one-on-one. -on -one. So I would encourage you to do that, and I am dead dog serious about helping you guys get this in place, because otherwise you're in that Uber car saying, My, what, what do you want to do today? Let's just go see San Diego, right? And that's, it's not how it should be, right? So I want you guys to commit to this, right? And I, I would hope that you guys go and, and commit this to writing, Can make a commitment to yourself, right? Because we're going to do an engagement activity here in a minute, but I hope you put by the end of this conference... If you need to come up to me, I got my, in my backpack, I got Think and Grow Rich, and you can take, I want to see if anyone does this who doesn't have their plan, and take a picture of page 36. And in your hotel room tonight, go do that. Right? But I hope that date says, by the end of this day, simple one pager, here's what I'm going to do, and it goes through it really well. So leverage point number three. And this originally, guys, this originally was my first this was, I had this in first place as one of the leverage points when I was preparing this presentation. And it moved down to number three because I realized the moral compass is first, right? Your core values. And then I realized the plan is second because you don't know who to go develop strategic relationships with if you have no plan on where you're trying to get to and no, you know, no course of action on how you're going to get there. So anyway, strategic relationships. How many of you heard people that say you could, if I was to, what would you do if you start over or had to start over? And people would say, take everything away from me, but let me keep my network, right? Have you heard that before when people talk about that? And I'd have my fortune back within a year. You know, you talk to these wealthy people, that's what they say. They say, just keep, let me keep my Rolodex, right? Let me keep my Rolodex. And I put up there strategic. And if you guys don't have that book, this is something we make a very, um, you know, when I say do everything with specific intent, that's a writer downer I gave you earlier, right? We plan out as much as possible our week with people that we either want to have lunch with, right? And we're trying to do that. We don't always go out to lunch. Sometimes we just go, you know, to brainstorm a few things we got to get taken care of. But on a weekly basis, at least once or twice a week, we're having a very strategic lunch with a hole or in our business or that we're trying to fill. How many so of you have been you to lunch with us? Show of hands that we've taken you out to lunch. Just keep them up high. Look around. Not enough. So a few of you, yeah. Thank you. Not enough. Breakfast. Yeah. We'll count breakfast, right? Very good. Very good. So those are just a few of them, right? Like I put capital partners up there, right? Because if you want to scale, that's where it starts, right? And there, it's a no like, and trust deal. 
And the reason that I like this book so much, he has a ton of gold within the book. But when you think just about, you know, the term breaking bread, right? If someone comes to your office or you go to their office, it's always kind of a one side of the table, right? I'm on my side. It's not, is it neutral ground? It's not neutral ground. When you go out to meet, what typically happens? Is it proper to just talk 110% business at lunch or dinner or breakfast? It's not proper, right? You're going to get to know about somebody on a much more intimate level. And so I think that's so important. But anyway, capital partners, asset managers, you know, I don't have up there, you know, people said, 60% of you said, how to find more product, right? I need more direct sources. Well, until you get direct sources, brokers have relationships. So pay some broker fees till you can, do, you know, till you do what you need to do. But your board of expert advisors, when we got started in this, you know, we were like, I want to do, we want to do this fast. And we need the right people to help us. And we weren't afraid to write checks. And we were writing some of these checks. And I'll talk about kind of what developed out of that with our co-invest group tomorrow. But your in-house team, right? People that are going to help. People that are good at other things that you are not good at, that you should not be doing, right? You develop what your superpowers are. And you stay focused in that little box of here is what I am world-renowned at. Here's what I'm really good at. Right? I've spent a lot of time refining this skill set. Stay focused on that. Okay? So again, guys, I'm high level here to start this event. We're going to get into some specifics, but I just want you to think about that. Our vendors and service providers, right? we worked really hard to assemble some key people that will allow you to just plug and play. Right? And there are people that have served us. Right? We've done a lot of vetting. We've looked, talked to a lot of people on their client lists. If we're not specifically doing business with them, most of them we are doing business with, right? So that's key. So this is, this is an interesting one. Leverage point number four, mentors or coaches. You guys are probably wondering why on earth is a picture of Mitt Romney up there with Peyton Manning, right? So uh, Thanksgiving Day, I'm watching football, right? Happen to be watching it with the man on the left, right? And a commercial comes on and uh, come to find out... Um, Mitt Romney does an a influencer event up in Park City every year, and they, they invite some of the who's who, some of the thought leaders, right? And it's one of those things where I'm like, well, oh, that's awesome. I want to go in your suitcase and serve, and I want to be at the next one, right? <laughs> you know, I'm trying to figure that out. But what, what happened was, you know, they run this event, and Peyton Manning was their last keynote, right? And uh, he's an investor, and Mitt's son, Tag, has a fund, Right? You know, it'd be really nice to be in a situation where you put money in, dad puts money in, a lot of other people put money in, but the minimum's 10 million bucks. The just minimum. A small, just a small. Bit. And so Peyton Manning is an investor in that fund. <laughs> Peyton Manning was the keynote speaker. And so, how many of you guys, if Mitt Romney was to say something that stuck out to him about Peyton Manning's keynote, would like to know what it was? Besides me. Right? So I'm sitting there. And Mitt Romney says, it, it stuck out to me, he says, Peyton Manning said, everyone needs a coach. And I'm not standing up here to say that as self-serving, because I have invested, I was trying to figure out last night, I'm over 300000 in coaching and mentoring and mastermind groups that I've done over the last 10 years, easily. It's probably more than that, right? And I sat there thinking about that term, and here's a guy who has had a lot of success in his life. And I was able to talk to him about who his coach is now, who his coaches were before that. And it just, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. It's like, I have to commit more to this process, right? Because I have some coaches in multiple different areas of our life, mentors, people who are moving us along. And I, I really think that's a big deal. And some of those relationships are paid, and some of those relationships are not paid, right? There are people that are giving back. And I would challenge you guys, there are people that want to mentor you no matter what age you are. You can always learn something, but there are people that are at a point in their life where they want to give back to you, right? They want to give back. They want to leave a legacy. They want to have significance in their lives, and I hope you'll seek them out, and there are people here, right, that you will meet that become accountability partners, mentors, right? So kind of a cool thing when someone like that says, everybody needs a coach, Peyton Manning, and that's what stood out to him, right? Kind of cool. So leverage point number five, if you missed yesterday, I would challenge you guys to, when the, as soon as the, the videos are out, or the recordings of this event, there's I would have you, there there's John back there. <laughs> John's actually designer of that cool process map that's up there. But anyway, leverage point number five, predictable marketing systems that generate 
and help you. You can have it from relationship marketing systems. You know, that those are, the, to me, on the, the, the pyramid of priority, right? At the very top are relationship marketing systems, right, that help you develop those relationships. And there's a lot of tools these days, and we talked a lot about some of them yesterday, that can help you magnify and multiply your influence and build, help you build relationships. So that's a big deal. And just to think about those, those are kind of the things you've got. You're going to generate a lead, right? We talked about a specific example that I won't go into today, but you've got to capture their information so you can continue building a relationship. It can't all be about, hey, here's my card. Hope, hope we catch up, right? It's kind of like, what are you going to do to serve that person, right? Nurture and conversion. So very cool. The other one, leverage point number six, asset management and workout systems. In the field of notes and passive income, right, you definitely need asset management systems, right? The workout systems you may not need as intensely as you do if you're buying uh, performing notes, but at some point, performing notes can go non-performing, right? So you do need to have some workout skills or a workout team that helps you. So that's very important, right? And you'll see there, that's just one of our recent uh, workouts Wednesdays that we did. Uh, we do that on, on a monthly basis where people can come in, they bring their actual loan files um, of stuff that they purchased and or some of them are still kind of in pre-funding mode, right? Where they're kind of hearing what everyone else is going through and it's very helpful. They can get their questions answered. They get stuck on a file. They're getting multiple ideas for next steps or things they should do next. It's helpful. So our systems can be your systems. We'll talk about that tomorrow. So leverage point number seven. And this one is what the whole weekend's about. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but there is a strategic word in there, which is thriving, right? And thriving means growing, right? And if you think you need, what's Murphy's Law, right? If you think you need 10 grand a month in passive income, 8 grand, whatever your number is, right? You know, I have a decent number that I'm trying to knock out, right, with that uh, 11 mouths to feed, right? You know, so, but whatever it is, you should always plan and have a fudge factor in there, right? It needs to be more, so it should be thriving, and we're going to talk about that. And I have rental properties up there. You end, you end up with rental properties. Notes, what's one problem with notes compared to physical real estate? Anybody know? What is it? Notes pay off. Notes pay off, right? Now, you can redeploy the capital, right? And they all come with, we could sit here and do a comparison. I think the answer is both. You need to have both. And that's something that, you know, people that are mentoring us, they have both. Right? And it's very important to do. So I won't spend a lot of time because that's what this whole weekend's about. Uh, leverage point number eight, last one. And you can say this is self-serving, right? It is. But you're okay. Self-serving. That's calling the, the a spade a spade, right? But the point of it is we want it, one, not just to be a leverage point that pays us. That's what this is, developing your max ROI mindset, right? Creating leverage points that pay you for a lifetime, right? Being here today... You know, it's a bold claim, but I believe, because I know from last year, I know people that connected and have done a tremendous amount of business together, right, just from us creating this, and we want that to be for you guys. We hope it's with us, but if it's with other people in the room, hey, it's abundant. You might resonate with other people more than you resonate with us. So you're going to have a smorgasbord this weekend, and I would encourage you guys, you know, to really engage, Okay, really, really engaged this weekend, and we're going to do something here in just a minute to get the energy level up, right? And we're excited about that, meet some new people, but that's a big deal. We're, we're going to be here until we hit our passive income goal, and then after that, I know we enjoy doing this. So I have a feeling it's going to be for a long time until we have lots of other people that hit their passive income goals. Remember Zig Ziglar's quote at the top, Right? You can get anything you want in life if you just help enough other people get what they want. So that's why this is number eight, and I believe it's a leverage point. Are there other live events out there that you can go to? Yes. Yes, and I would encourage you to, to find some other ones to go to and participate in those. We hope you'll choose us, right? Mm -hmm.